There are quite a few ways that you can make notes for yourself in Scrivener, the first of which is annotations. And this one's probably the one that I use the most um, just because I find it to be the quickest and easiest way to jot down a thought and keep moving. So an annotation is just a formatted text that gets inserted into the existing text in the editor wherever you have your cursor. So if I were doing revisions, for example, and I'm reading through and I decide I want to make a note here, then I go up to Format, Inline Annotation, and I definitely have that shortcut memorized for turning it on and off. And then I can start typing. So I'm going to put a space in just for visual clarity for me. And you don't see anything until you start typing. So there my little red box appears. And then I'm going to type whatever my note is. Maybe different color. Oops. And then because I'm inserting this into the middle of the text, I don't necessarily have to turn off that mode unless I wanted to keep typing regular text now. So if I turn it off, then you'll notice I can type normal text now. So that's an annotation. Those are pretty simple, kind of in your face and easy to add on the fly while you're in the middle of writing. Another option that you have is comments. And comments are a little bit more out of the way. So let's say down here I want to leave a comment. I can click the comment button or go to format comment. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that one too. And it uses the last color um, that I used for comments. So you'll notice it comes up with a name, date, and timestamp if you were trying to keep track of um, when you had made the comments or you have multiple people collaborating on a Scrivener project and you want to have a stamp of who whose note it was without having to write it in there, you can leave that in. But it's highlighted, ready to type, in which case it'll overwrite the name, date, and timestamp. So I can leave whatever note I want for myself here Maybe I feel like I need to do more research on this topic or whatever it is. And then the nice thing is I can click out, but if I just press the escape key on my keyboard, my cursor goes right back to where I started. So if I were in the middle of writing and I wanted to make a comment and then keep writing, I could just click the comment button or use the comment shortcut, write my comment, hit escape. It would bring me right back to where I was writing and then I could keep going. And then you'll notice with comments, the nice thing is if I click a comment in the comment and footnotes sidebar, it actually jumps me right to that comment in the text that I'm looking at and highlights it for me. And that also works in reverse. So if I click on this link, the comment in the right hand sidebar is highlighted or selected. Another option you have for leaving notes for yourself on a broader scale is document notes. So to view the document notes for uh, whatever document you're currently working on or viewing in the editor, this center pane, you click the notes button on the inspector, looks like a little steno pad. And then down at the bottom is the notes section or notes pane for that document. You can click the header and this is where you can toggle between document and project notes. And I'll talk about project notes in a second. So on document notes, then I can leave any kind of note here for myself. Um, but since it's not specific to a, a location in the text, this would be a note that's a little bit more broad. So maybe um, I still have some things I need to look at. And I've changed my font here. This is a formatable section. So you can adjust the font to whatever you want. And maybe I want to add another note about something like that. Just a little thoughts that I have about this scene or section, but 
that maybe don't apply to a specific location within the scene. Okay, so those are document notes. Those can be included when you compile if you wanted to have each scene uh, with its notes next to it, or I should say above or below it. So that's another option there. Okay, project notes then are kind of the broadest scale you have, and you can access those by clicking on the notes header and choosing uh, project notes. So initially you'll just have project notes general in the example that I wrote for the blog, I added another project notebook. So here's where I might write things that are global to the manuscript or the project. So maybe the rounds of revisions I still have left to do, some of the overall research I still need to look at. Or for fiction, what I often do is I use this to keep a list of characters and their basic traits like hair and eye color and age and maybe their background, which is especially useful for some of the secondary characters that only appear a few times throughout the book so that I don't forget, oh, he was bald and he had you know, some nervous tick that I forgot that I mentioned, things like that. So there are lots of ways to use project notes. You can click on the notes header and click manage project notes and this is where you can add or remove additional notebooks. So if I wanted to have a notebook on settings, and maybe this is for all the different locations I have, etc. You know, I can just type in the different locations and how they're relevant to the story. So you can you can access your notes from within this or from the header. So if I wanted to see the settings, I can just look there and I can add new new settings here. Um, something like that. Now all these notes are great, but you may not want to scroll through your entire manuscript just to find them again. So there's some quick, easy ways to search your notes um, when you're ready to deal with them. If you go to Edit, Find, Find by Formatting, you can use this to search for inline annotations, comments and footnotes, um, and lots of other things too. So inline annotations is what we're going to start with. If I were marking these up with specific text, like I mentioned in the blog post, I might look for gun questions. So I've marked those annotations with the word gun or hack for hacking questions or similar to that. Then I might want to only compile my list of gun questions or only go through and deal with those particular sections. I can put the specific text in there. Um, this is also helpful later because I like to mark certain sections that I think would be good for marketing excerpts. And so I mark those excerpt and then I would come in here and I would search only for those containing the text excerpt and that would let me skip anything else that I still had left in the manuscript. And then I can choose whether to search all documents or just the ones I have selected in the binder. So if I click next, it'll jump me to the first instance. Um, I can deal with it if, I, if I'm done and I've handled it, I can delete it. And then I can click next and it'll take me to the next one and so on. It just runs you through. Okay, you can search for comments this way too. So it jumped down here and if I wanted to see that in the comments and footnotes sidebar, then I can click on that button in the inspector and display it. It'll just jump, jump me through all the comments I have. So again, similar process. Document notes, you can search using Scrivener's project search. So that's this text box in the upper right corner. And Normally by default, all is chosen. So this would search everything, titles, text, notes, synopses, etc. If I want to just narrow my search only to my document notes, then I would choose that and then type in the word I'm looking for. So let's say I'm looking for something related to hacking. Okay. Then on the left, my binder changes to a search results list, showing me all of the documents that have document notes with the word hack in them. So I'm going to click on that one, 
come over to the inspector and make sure I'm viewing the notes. Make sure I'm viewing the document notes. And then you'll notice there's the highlighted instance of the word hack, in this case, as part of hacking. So that's how you can search your document notes, which is nice because sometimes you might leave a note for yourself and not remember which scene or, or document you attached it to. To cancel this project search, I just click the X in the text box and I get my binder back. So finally, project notes, if you want to search those, um, basically you just have to go to the project notes and then you can do a find command uh, because you only have you know, one or a few project notebooks to look at. So if you just had the general project notes and you can view that from any document, it may just be a matter of looking at it if it's pretty short. If you have a long list and you want to search through it, just click in it and go to edit, find, find. And now Scrivener will confine the search to the project notes pane. So if I'm looking for the word rifle, and I click next, it finds the next instance of the word rifle and so on. So you can just go through this project notes document individually. So those are Scrivener's note features. I hope you find them helpful.